One of the planet's largest predators, the beautiful and powerful polar bear, is in crisis, and a simple equation tells us why. But change that equation, and we can begin a new path of survival and hope for these priceless animals. I'm National Wildlife Federation naturalist David Mizajewski. Simply put, there's one thing that's critical for polar bears to survive in their harsh Arctic environment. Ice. These bears are supremely adapted to live, hunt, breed, and even den on sea ice platforms. Here's why. When it comes to survival, polar bears are utterly dependent on one primary source of food. Seals. Seals are rich in the fat that the bears need to survive, which is extremely important for the females in particular. Skinny bears simply don't get pregnant, and if they do, it's a life and death struggle for the cubs. The only way for bears to capture seals is to hunt them on the sea ice. Without ice, the bears can't hunt, and ultimately they starve. So here's how it adds up. If you have enough ice to allow the polar bears to hunt seals, you're gonna end up with a healthy and reproducing polar bear population. Unfortunately, something isn't adding up anymore. Higher temperatures from global warming are causing dramatic declines in the sea ice across the Arctic. For polar bears living in the southern part of their range where the effects of global warming are most dramatic, this means less and less time to hunt the seals. And as a result, the polar bears are suffering. This isn't breaking news to the experts like Dr. Ian Sterling, who has been researching polar bears for decades. And uh, pretty much everything that we predicted uh, about 20 years ago uh, has now uh, come to fruition and is, uh, is, is kind of common knowledge. The bears in the western Hudson Bay face a unique challenge. They're forced onto land every summer as the sea ice melts. In the 1970s, it was approximately 120 days. In 2010, the ice was gone for 160 days. Imagine going without food for an additional 40 days. National Wildlife Federation biologist Sterling Miller traveled to Manitoba with Polar Bears International. This year they came ashore very early as the ice broke up early and the ice is forming up later. We are, are fearful that the situation is going to become critical for polar bears uh, in this area. The bottom line is without ice and without seals, you don't have bears. Our warming planet is the new part of this age-old equation. Our addiction to dirty fuels means things just don't compute for wild polar bears in our future. Dr. Miller met with Polar Bears International senior scientist and longtime colleague, Dr. Stephen Amstrup on the tundra near Hudson Bay. We don't do something about greenhouse gases that the most probable outcome was the ultimate loss of polar bears throughout their current range. If we look at polar bears and we say polar bears are not doing well and it looks like the future is really grim for polar bears, we can project that just a little bit further and say, you know, that's just a foreshadowing of what's going to happen uh, around the rest of the globe and uh, it's going to affect us all. Whether you're talking about uh, individuals, uh, governments, large industries, the message is the same. We all have to simply reduce our output of carbon and our carbon footprint. We need to do something now to minimize the global warming threat and make this equation work again. That's why NWF has joined up with Polar Bears International. Together, we hope to inspire people to take the actions necessary to save polar bears. We can change this frightening equation with a little new math. Here's how it can work. If we lower global warming pollution in the atmosphere, like carbon dioxide, we're gonna be able to keep the temperatures in the Arctic down. And that's really good news for polar bears, because if those Arctic temperatures stay down, we're gonna make sure that there's plenty of ice for them to go out and hunt seals. And if that happens, it means we're gonna have polar bears with us well into the future. I very much hope that we are able to turn things around a little bit so that uh, polar bears and Arctic sea ice and polar environments are part of the, the world that they, my grandchildren will live in and that their grandchildren will live in. If the time came when I went to northern Alaska and couldn't see a polar bear, that would be, that would be really hard to take. I mean, uh, you know, I, I can get emotional about that. <laughs> Learn more about what you can do to help these awe-inspiring wild animals at polarbearsinternational.org. And for more on how you can make a difference, visit nwf.org slash polarbears.